welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. It is a great day here in Bloomington, Illinois. I'm having a great day with Christ, great day preparing to declare the Word of God and do the work of seeing tracks go all over the world. I hope you're having a great day in Christ as well. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of Mark, and uh, we're going to begin looking at verse 9 today. The Gospel of Mark, the, the uh, last chapter, chapter 16, verse 9. And I really want you to have your Bible open and look at this with me, if you would, please. I don't know how, uh, how aware you are about some of the battles that are going on these days concerning Bible doctrine, Bible teaching. Probably the most recent battle deals with the idea of who gets into heaven and if there really is a hell to be feared. There are some men who, who want to be viewed as Christian leaders and, uh, and so on, but these guys have begun to repeat an old falsehood. That old falsehood is that God would eventually let everybody into heaven. The title for that is called universalism. Everybody gets into heaven. It's not biblical. Now, as we come to chapter 16 and verse 9 of Mark's gospel, we are into a different battle. This battle is over whether verses 9 through the end of the chapter should even be in our Bibles. Now, let me give you the short answer right now. Yes. <laughs> yes, these verses belong in our Bibles. Mark 16, 9 to 20 do belong in our Bibles. Don't let anybody talk you into thinking otherwise. What you believe about your Bible is of utmost most importance. We're going to talk about that today here on Bible Tract Echoes. Now, in my hand right now is one of the gospel tracts that we publish here. This one's entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. How many times have you and I who have tried to share the gospel heard somebody say that when we ask them, if God were to, to ask you why he should let you into heaven, what would you say? They say something like, well, I've tried to be good and tried to keep the Ten Commandments and so on. And you know immediately these people don't know the gospel of the grace of God. They're, they're dealing with a works salvation. And man is not saved. Women are not saved. Children are not saved by works. Lest any man should boast. We're saved by the grace of God. Faith in God's Son. Here is a track designed to confront people who are thinking that if I can keep the, the Ten Commandments or uh, keep them fairly decently, <laughs> uh, nobody can, but if I can keep them fairly decently, then God will somehow or another let me into heaven. Friend, that's just not true. Here's a great track that I think you'll find great use for as you are involved in personally passing out tracks and witnessing. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to be giving you a way, um, a matter of fact, three or four ways by which you can communicate with us and give us your name and give us your address. And when you do that, you can ask for a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. This one, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, will be in there. Also, at the end of the broadcast, at near my end of my time, I'm going to repeat a, a telephone number that's just for text messaging. I want you to text message me and make this a two-way communication. I want you to text me the word gospel to a number I'm about ready to give, so get something to write it down with. Text me the word gospel, and uh, I'm going to begin to ask you some simple, short questions that require minimal response by you, but uh, you can give me feedback on the broadcast and tell me what you think. Here's the number. Text me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. 708-515-4086. And I'll, as I said, I'll give you that uh, phone number again near the end of the broadcast. Well, look with me, please. Beginning at verse 9, Mark 16, we find these words. 
Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils or demons. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. I'm going to stop reading right there. Frankly, I, you need to know, I thought really long and hard about whether I should even deal with the topic before me today, uh, but uh, I'm going to. Uh, we focus here mostly on these broadcasts, almost exclusively to the gospel and to gospel tellers. Yet there are, there are the right times for us to do some things that impact gospel tellers. If somebody has doubts about the truthfulness of their Bible, they will most likely not be overzealous to share the message of the Bible. Now, those who believe the Bible is just a bunch of uh, of myths and, and unreliable stories, they're, they're more than glad to tell you that the Bible is just a bunch of myths. But those of us who believe the Bible to be the inspired and infallible and inerrant word of God, we have the greatest news to tell people. We have the message about eternal life. But if somebody doubts their Bible, even if they believe in Christ, if they doubt their Bible, they're not going to talk about Christ with any kind of zeal at all. Now, if you have any kind of study Bible in front of you or in your house, most likely you have a note here at Mark 16 that that questions whether verses 9 to 20 should be included in the scriptures. Now, um, so let me say some 30 years of after through some 30 years of pastoral ministry, uh, that note has, I have discovered, undermined some folk in the churches that I pastored and undermined their trust in the Bible and the message of the Bible. Now listen, Jesus is very blunt in the Word of God on this issue about his Word. I hope you have Matthew 5, 18, underlined, highlighted something in your Bible. Jesus there promised that not even one letter or one part of a letter, one jot or one tittle of his word will pass away till all of it is fulfilled. God has taken personal interest and personal responsibility in protecting his word. And not just the big ideas about the Bible, but even the very minute parts of the letters of the words. The enemies of Jesus have burned and destroyed thousands, maybe even millions of copies of the Bible over the centuries, but God protects the Bible. Sometimes uh, you need to go over and, and read Isaiah 40 and verse 8. There you'll you'll see that God's word, it says, shall stand forever. Man can't destroy it. 1 Peter 1.25 says that God's word endureth forever. You know why it does? God has taken personal responsibility to protect it. Men cannot, uh, they cannot destroy the scripture. Oh, they can try, but they can't do it. Satan, though, since he can't destroy the scriptures, will try to get God's people and all people, frankly, to doubt the Bible. If he can achieve this, he knows that even people that believe in Jesus will be weak and weak saints accomplish nothing for the Lord. Now, let me give you some reasons why I believe that Ma- that Mark 16, 9 through 20 ought to be in our Bible and viewed absolutely as part of the authentic word of God. Despite what your, your study Bible may say, you leave these verses in and let me give you some reasons why. Reason number one is this. Did you realize that the overwhelming majority of all the existing Greek manuscripts that go back as far as we have, the the, the overwhelming majority include these 12 verses? Now, I'm not against godly scholars who go about comparing old Bible manuscripts. I delight in their intellect. I delight in their godliness. But please, let the manuscripts speak, and they speak saying this, leave the verses in there. Reason number two why we ought to leave those verses in there and believe them and preach them is this. The earliest Christian writers that we possessed, 
those writers that were, came after the apostles that all died off. Uh, we have writers, church fathers that go way back to the second century, after the first century Christians, people who had actually seen the, 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 the earthly ministry of Christ. These early writers, uh, as we find what they have written, we find that they were well acquainted with the verses that here in the end of Mark chapter 16. And some of those writers, matter of fact, many of those writers actually quote from these verses. If it was good enough for them, friend, let's leave them in there. Reason number three why we should leave these verses in our Bible is this. These verses complete the gospel account of Jesus' life. The other three Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and John, tell events not only of Jesus' life and death, but of his resurrection and post-resurrection events. Mark's Gospel would be incomplete without these verses. They belong here. Let me give you one more reason. Reason number four why we ought to leave Mark chapter 16, verses 9 to 20 in our Bibles is this. Uh, Well, let me refer back to those early church writers that I spoke about a moment ago. We can go back and look at them. Not a single one of them ever, 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 not a single one ever shows any doubt to the authenticity of these verses. Now, there's a whole lot of books that have been written on these, the very topic that I'm dealing with here today. Uh, let it suffice for you and I uh, that, that let these reasons I've given suffice to build the confidence that God has preserved his word and that God will always protect and preserve his word. On that promise, you and I are called to go and tell the good news found in his word. It's not enough for us to know why we ought to keep the verses. We ought to go and tell the verses of the risen Lord. Now, let me stop here. How are you responding to this particular broadcast today? How do you, what are you thinking about here? Talk to me, communicate with me, text message me, text the word gospel. I'm going to give the number again. Are you ready? I'm going to give it twice here. Here we go. Text me the word gospel, that's G-O-S-P-E-L, to area code 708-515-4086. Again, the word gospel to 708-515-4086. Now, friend, knowing that you and I have a reliable Bible is great. (laughs) That's great. We can sit uh, up straight and say, Praise God. My Bible is the Word of God. But what are you doing with the Bible that is the Word of God? Are you using it? Did you use it this morning to start your day, to to get yourself prepared to walk with God? Did you use it? Are, are, uh, Are you telling the message of the Bible? The message of the Bible can be summarized in one word. The message is Jesus Jesus said at the end, the last chapter of Luke, that all of the scripture is about him. The Old Testament predicts him, pictures him. The New Testament, the Gospels reveal him. The New Testament gives us fuller information about him. And friend, he's the Savior. Dear friend, if you don't know Christ, the reliable, truthful Bible says you're a sinner. But you can be saved from your sin, but only through Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.